for example. So uh, in general, Apaka allows for an easy exchange of the accelerator. This allows you to easily port programs across different accelerators and different device types, and also to experiment with different devices that may be present in your system. And uh, we will see later today, you will uh, also be able to mix different accelerator types. So uh, to use CPUs and GPUs in parallel, for example. Now, the, obviously, the question arises which device type to use. Uh, as a good rule of thumb, you should offload computationally intensive parts to GPUs, because GPUs are designed for high throughput, meaning that they can handle many lightweight threads, but they have a high memory latency. CPUs, on the other hand, are designed for low latency. They usually just have a few heavyweight threads, which, which are expensive to schedule on and off the cores but they have a low memory latency, largely because they have a quite uh, large amount of cache when compared to a GPU. Uh, switching the accelerator is quite easy in Alpaca. We provide you with a number of predefined different accelerators in the ECK namespace. For GPUs, we have a CUDA accelerator and we have a HIP accelerator that can access both AMD and NVIDIA GPUs. And then there are multiple different accelerators for CPUs. We have one based on Boost Fiber. We have multiple uh, accelerators based on OpenMP, both OpenMP 2 and 4. We have an accelerator based on threading building blocks. And we also have an accelerator based on the C++ standard thread. All you need to do to exchange it is uh, demonstrated here on the right hand side. You just uh, choose the accelerator in a, in a simple type dev and everything works automatically afterwards. However, when you change your device type, you have to adjust the work division. GPUs have many more cores than CPUs, which means that many more parallel threads are possible. And GPUs also have several multiprocessors. Each multiprocessor, on the other hand, can execute multiple threads at once. And threads are grouped into blocks on uh, GPUs, and these blocks are scheduled to run on a multiprocessor. So one block will be executed by a multiprocessor, or more precisely, by the cores of the multiprocessor. So you would want to adjust your work division to that. On a CPU, we have, uh, for example, you would run like eight threads or something, so you would just define eight blocks per grid, one thread per block, and one element per thread. On a GPU, you, this would look a little, uh, bit differently. You would define 64 blocks, and each block, for example, could have 512 threads. There are some performance hints you have to consider when using GPUs. Uh, you will want to avoid divergent if-else blocks. This is because on the hardware level, GPU threads are organized into distinct groups. These are called warps on NVIDIA GPUs and wave fronts on AMD GPUs. These groups are executed in lockstep, and this means if there is divergence in these groups, all threads will execute the if block first and then the else block next. They are just masked out, but they still execute. This means that if you have a very short if block, for example, and a very long else block, the if block will have a considerably worse performance. GPU threads are also much more lightweight than CPU threads, which means that context switching is very cheap on GPUs. And this means that you should spawn many more threads than you have a GPU cores in the general case. This is so you can hide the high memory latency on GPUs behind computation. Are there any questions to this? Yes, concerning the if blocks, if they are all, uh, if the same true or false for the if block, then there's no issue with the if else, right? No, the problem is when you have in the same block a divergence. So some threads in the warp uh, have uh, uh, follow the if block and the other follow the else block, then both parts will execute both if and else. Okay, thanks. I mean, Jan, just to clarify a little bit, they will execute in terms of like runtime, but of course, logically, the code will be correct. Too. Yeah, as a, it's a performance uh, thing, not a correctness thing. 
It's a performance thing, right? So uh, they won't uh, actually overwrite the data or anything, but they still have to run through the block internally. They're just masked also that they don't write anything to memory. Okay, any more questions? Guess not. Then we'll head on to the uh, to the next part.